In December, a 70-year-old woman was shot and killed by a corrections officer at the Spokane County Jail. Today, for the first time, we are seeing video of that incident and what led up to the shooting. Also today, the CDC releasing new mask guidelines. So we're breaking down the changes this will bring for people who are fully vaccinated. Coeur d'Alene is the hottest housing market in the country. So tonight we're hearing from a real estate agent for a little perspective on this ultra competitive housing market. And in weather, we're tracking sunshine on Wednesday and 70s for Thursday. Your forecast is next. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Creme to News at 6. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Welcome everyone. I'm Whitney Ward. We begin tonight for the first time now seeing video from a shooting last year where a corrections officer shot and killed a 70 year old woman. You may remember this. It happened last December in the lobby of the Spokane County Jail. Tonight we obtained video of that incident and we do want to warn you that video may be upsetting to view. Our Casey Decker is breaking down what you can actually see in the video. Well, county officials had told us that the woman Nancy King was asking to be let into the lobby, but it was closed due to COVID. She kept insisting, so Sergeant Justin White arrived to speak with her. White said in his report that King came at him with a knife. And the video we obtained today seems to support that claim. We'll show you a part of it now. You can see White and King talking at the door. Then it all happens fast. King raises a knife. White backs up quickly and draws his gun. King walks towards White. He fires the gun. And we're going to stop the video just before that moment. King was pronounced dead not long after. Following her death, a number of local activists questioned why lethal force was needed against a small elderly woman who had a history of mental health problems. Today, Spokane's NAACP president said after reviewing the video and the report, she doesn't want anyone to vilify Sergeant White, but says different training might have helped prevent Nancy King's death. This could, in my opinion, this certainly could have been de-escalated differently. And then, um, you know, and it's unfortunate that again, you, how do you say, don't do what you were trained to do. You, you can't say that unless there is another means of training offered, which is really the point that I'd like to get at. There are also questions raised about how police handled King's mental health. Earlier on the day of her death, police believe she actually called in a pair of bomb threats. When officers arrived at the hotel she was staying at, they asked for a crisis responder from Frontier Behavioral Health. But one detective told investigators, quote, we were told they were refusing to respond because they did not believe her threats were credible, given the multiple threats she'd made in the past and the fact that she was 70 years old and had no reasonable capability to carry out her threats. Now, those crisis responders are actually separate from SPD's own behavioral health unit. They're sort of an advanced team provided by Frontier, so SPD couldn't speak on this specific case, but the behavioral health sergeant told me, generally speaking, threats are called in frequently. Uh, it's not uncommon for individuals to call 911 uh, multiple times a day um, with certain threats or uh, reports of harm. Not often do they carry out their set threats. We also asked Frontier for comment late today, but we have not yet heard back. And we reached out to the county and to a member of King's family. Neither had comment tonight. In the newsroom, Casey Decker, Crem2 News. In other news today, the Spokane Public School Board looking for community members feedback on changes to North Central High School's mascot. SPS hosting a public forum at 630 getting underway here in about half an hour. During the meeting back in March, the board was discussing possible changes to the mascot as well as accompanying symbols and signs. The school has had the Indian as its mascot since the 1920s, but many people have said that imagery is offensive and inappropriate. Yesterday I talked with one student at North Central who told us why now is exactly exactly the time for a change. I say that it makes it extremely difficult to validate my own identity when I'm constantly being shown images of what I should look like or how I should act. And it's really just this dehumanizing image that casts aside the struggles of indigenous people today. Yes, I think a lot of people, a lot of people like to rely on this, on this fact that or on this idea that uh, mascots honor indigenous people. And I can tell you that I don't feel honored. So again, that public forum is happening tonight. It's scheduled to start at 630 and run until 8 o'clock. It's all taking place on Zoom, so it'll be easy for you to attend. You can visit the SPS website to register to attend online or to give your public comment. You can also text the word forum to us, 509-448-2000, and we'll send you a link so you can register. Starting today, if you're fully vaccinated and you're outdoors, 
You need, and not in a big crowd, you no longer need to wear a mask. New today, officials say fully vaccinated Americans do not need to wear masks outdoors. The CDC came up with new guidelines, so here's what you can and cannot do. If you're fully vaccinated, you no longer need to wear that mask if you're out on a walk, a run, or a bike if you're outdoors at a small outdoor gathering or dining at an outdoor restaurant. You will still need one, though, if you're in a crowded place. So if you're not vaccinated, the rules are a bit different, of course. For example, you'll need to wear a mask if at a small outdoor gathering with vaccinated and unvaccinated people. You'll also have to wear one dining outdoors and, of course, in crowded places. The CDC recommends masks still be worn even if you're fully vaccinated in crowded outdoor settings and venues such as packed stadiums or at concerts. The CDC will continue to recommend this until widespread vaccination is achieved. Although these vaccines are extremely effective, we know that the virus spreads very well indoors. Until more people are vaccinated, and while we still have more than 50,000 cases a day, mask use indoors will provide extra protection. So masked, fully vaccinated people can also safely attend church or worship services inside, go to an indoor restaurant or bar, and participate in indoor exercise class. Again, as a reminder, the CDC defines fully vaccinated as 14 days after your second dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine or 14 days after the single J&J &J vaccine. Following the announcement, President Joe Biden encouraged all Americans to get vaccinated. The bottom line is clear. If you're vaccinated, you can do more things more safely, both outdoors as well as indoors. For, so for those who haven't gotten their vaccination yet, especially if you're younger or think you don't need it, this is another great reason to go get vaccinated now, now. We also have some new information tonight about an ongoing spike of COVID cases in Ferry County. This is after a protest event turned into a super spreader event. So two and a half weeks ago, we know over the weekend of April 9th, 10th and 11th, they had a protest event. It was held at the Republic Eagles Club. So at that time, they had just five cases. That's down here when the numbers uh, were very, very low. Today, there are 80 cases and the number is still going up. And if you take a look, this is a line graph that obviously shows that incredible spike. Then this is comparing our state numbers. If you take a look, the start of the pandemic all the way from the beginning of last year, just a dramatic jump in the number of cases for every 100,000 people. So this is just another way of looking at it. When you compare those state numbers, the line right here is the state average. That, of course, is Republic, where we are about five times higher than the entire rest of the state. Now, we also want to show you some video of the town of Republic. This is a very small town, a very small county as well, with a population of less than 8,000 people. It's actually gotten so bad there that it's now impacting local businesses. In fact, the bank had to shut down early because they didn't have enough staff. The grocery store had limited capacity. Even the local court cases are starting to get delayed because so many people are now homesick or in quarantine, all because of possible exposure. Also, hospitalizations are on the rise, so much so they're now having to send patients out of the area just to find available beds. And sometimes there isn't even enough room in Spokane or Wenatchee to take those patients in right away. And health experts tell me today they fully expect the numbers to get worse before they get better. Keep an eye on that one. Meantime, the Spokane Regional Health District is reporting 67 new coronavirus cases. That brings the total number of cases to 47,717 since the pandemic began. The total number of COVID related deaths now stands at 608 in the county, with four of those deaths happening just last week. Right now, 77 COVID patients are hospitalized in Spokane County. Want to switch gears for a moment to talk about weather because overall pretty nice day across the inland northwest. Want to get straight out to Chief Meteorologist Tom Sher in the Outdoor Weather Center. And Tom, these are the nights where I'm assuming you like to be outdoors soaking in the sunshine. Oh boy, it's it's absolutely outstanding here. Our, li our lawn now is greening up. And have you seen the explosions of color and flowers around the area? And everybody who planted bulbs in the fall and it was a little dreary and you're like, what am I doing this for? We're all enjoying it uh, when we go on our 
walks now because it's just big, beautiful explosions of, of color from a lot of those bulbs that you planted last fall. So on behalf of everyone out there walking, thank you very, very much. Uh, let's check this out. Sunshine and warm weather expected tomorrow. We're actually going to climb into the 70s for Thursday and Friday. And then over the weekend, slight chance of a few showers on Saturday, but uh, overall looking pretty darn nice. As you see, the current temperature now 62 degrees. It's pretty windy, though. You can see the wind is out of the southwest now up into the 20s, uh, and I can feel that right now, the bit of a, of a wind gust. The peak wind gust in the Spokane area today was 28 miles per hour. Uh, tonight, we'll look for partly cloudy skies with an overnight low of 39. Should be beautiful tomorrow under mostly sunny skies and a high temperature of 69 degrees. We're going to get into the 70s on Thursday and Friday. Then we'll cool it back down. Still above average temperatures over the weekend. I've got temps hitting 68 on Saturday, 65 degrees on Sunday. Slight chance of rain, a little breezy too on Saturday. I'll have a look at your 10 day forecast all coming up in a few minutes. I cannot wait to see that, Tom. Thank you very much.